Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's Coffee and Conversations chat with CU Denver Student Life. I'm Lance Gluns, Procurement Coordinator for the Student Life Office. Today, I'm joined by M. Alves, Violence Prevention Education Coordinator for the Phoenix Center at Auraria. Hello, M. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Yes, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, so to start with some of our questions. Personally, how are you handling this time of remote work and social distancing? Yeah, I mean, I think like, like for many of us, it's been a pretty big adjustment um, and really just been taking it one, at a uh, one day at a time. Uh, there's no rule book for this. And uh, I've been really trying my best to be kind to myself and to um, everyone that I interact with because there is truly no rule book for this and we, we're all just doing the best that we can. So personally, I, I feel very blessed um, to be home safe um, and professionally, I've been very lucky to be in an office that is still able to serve uh, our clients during a time like this. Great. I appreciate that. Thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about the Phoenix Center and how your operations have been affected by our campus changes? Yeah, so as um, folks uh, are aware, the Phoenix Center is your on-campus interpersonal violence support and education office. Um, so that means that our in-office advocates are now remote. So we are still available Monday through Friday, eight to five for in-office appointments that are now done in a, more of a telehealth manner. Mm -hmm. um, and every, confidentiality and privacy is completely respected. We take really, really careful precautions when it comes to that. So please know that. And then we also, of course, we still have our 24 seven helpline and that is that continues to be fully staffed. Um, so at any time of night, it could be 2 a.m. and you could be having a panic attack, someone can call that line and a trained advocate will be on the other side and they'll be able to walk you through a grounding technique and then mm -hmm. set an appointment for you with an advocate. Um, something that I also really want to mention is that our helpline, which is 303-556-2255 or 556-CALL, um, is a helpline that you don't need to know for sure that you're experiencing violence to call. So if you are just uncertain, an advocate can help work through some of that with you. Um, and that can be whether that's a personal situation or if it's, this, it's someone you know. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, one thing I understand from our time on campus is that April is a very important time for the Phoenix Center as Sexual Assault Awareness Month. So how may students provide support or foster awareness given our current situation? And are there any key messages to reflect on this year in particular? Yeah, thank you so much for asking. So um, April is SAM, uh, so Sexual Assault Awareness Month, SAM for short. And so we're so, so excited. Um, in light of our recently debuted Comprehensive Sexuality Education um, Workshop, Mm -hmm. we decided that this year's theme was going to be a combination of healthy sexuality um, which is really really important because we know that um, healthy sexuality and comprehensive sexuality education that is inclusive um, keeps keeps our young people safe mm -hmm. um, that is a fact it lets young people uh, be seen as well and so it also um, mitigates mental health effects so that's something that we really really wanted to focus on um, because realistically systemically we're not setting up in an environment for people to experience healthy sexuality um, mm -hmm. fully within all that they could be experiencing Right, and so some of the things we're also talking about is, um, the, so the importance of inclusive sexuality education and how that builds protective factors, uh, as well as things like stereotypes and what are the harms of stereotypes and how does that affect people's sexualities um, and how does that affect people's experiences of different violences? Because we know that it definitely affects the kind of resources that folks are going to be accessing. Okay, great, thank you so much. Are there um, programs associated with SAM or in general that um, are coming up through the Phoenix Center? Yeah, so a couple of things. I do want to um, say that this month, uh, we're not quite solid on the date yet, um, but we pushed up our um, debut of the Phoenix podcast, which surprise, where we've been nice. working on. Um, and so we're definitely going to be talking about things like Tiger King and the sexual violence and present in that that has gone largely unaddressed yeah. um, and then we're also running a few campaigns and so you can find that in our recently um, posted newsletter on our social media 
So there are three campaigns that we're really focusing on for students to get involved in and to show how Auraria is still showing up for survivors, even with everything going on. So one of that is what Sam means to me. It's a what, hashtag what, Sam's mean, what Sam means to me campaign. We're asking um, folks uh, with any connection to the campus to do a short one minute video about what Sexual Assault Awareness Month means to them. And it can be from any lens. It can be personally, professionally, as a student, a staff member, a survivor, an ally. There's no um, pressure to come from any particular lens. Mm -hmm. um, and then we just are asking for folks to send that uh, to my email, m.alves at ucdenver.edu. Um, to for that to then be used in our social media. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in addition to that, one of our interns, Maria Andrade, she is she did two um, English, one English and one Spanish language videos on supporting survivors um, and asking for folks to leave comments of support um, mm -hmm. to let folks know that we're like we're still in community with one another, even though we're remote. Um, we're still seeing each other. We're still uh, showing up for one another in one in some way. And so we're asking for folks to comment and share that. Um, and then uh, you mentioned the the clothesline project. Yes. Um, yeah. So we're really excited that we were able to figure out a way to do a digital clothesline project. So we have blank shirt templates online that anyone can fill out. You'll find like the key for what each color means. Um, and then just submit that to info at the PCA.org. And we'll be putting that in our gallery. And then we're also working on putting together some sort of video that kind of recreates a walkthrough of, of those shirts. And then our hope is, is that as soon as we're able to return to campus is that we can create an event where we are physically recreating those shirts so that we're still oh, able to have awesome. that community time. Sounds great. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm happy that you're able to so move so many, especially like the closed line tradition, being able to move into a virtual format. I know it's something I look for every April. It's kind of a staple in the Tivoli. Totally, totally. And we are so happy. Um, our interns are so creative and wonderful. This was actually the idea of one of our interns who um, is just casually also a graphic designer. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So um, we're so thankful for them and their expertise. Great, thank you. Um, so what Phoenix Center resources are available to students who might miss your campus presence? Um, mm -hmm. And if not on campus, are there local or online alternatives they could pursue? Totally, um, so our advocates are still fully available um, and our in-office advocates have, re have transitioned to remote services. So that means either they're doing some sort of video format, kind of like what we're doing, mm -hmm. or it's through email, whatever is safest for that particular client. Mm -hmm. um, so we're very lucky. Most services are seeing a downtick in number and we're not seeing quite what we would have expect or expected or what other um, services have seen. Mm -hmm. So, and then the helpline still available 24 seven. And it's just important to know that advocates work with you to find the best resources particular to your situation. Mm -hmm. So if you aren't sure what's available for you, if you feel that the uh, experience you're having with violence is uh, there's a lot of different factors going on. Talking to an advocate is the best way to figure out what are your options. Um, and then you get to make that decision. Mm -hmm. um, I, and then in terms of events that we're also having on campus, there is going to be an event uh, on holistic healing for black survivors that one of our interns, Alex Baylor is working on. Mm -hmm. So um, we're asking for folks if they're interested in that to email me to RSVP. Um, as more details become available. Okay, great, thank you. Um, and do you have any um, parting advice for us or any final thoughts for students who might be struggling at home, wherever they are? Yeah, uh, so my only advice is really that it, it's okay not to be okay. Um, we're all being impacted really differently at this time. Um, and especially, you know, with the scope of my office, knowing that a lot of people are experiencing violence at home under stay at home. So outside isn't safe, but neither is home. Mm -hmm. um, so just, there's no rule book for this. Like I said, be kind to yourself. That's something that I'm working on personally. And also know that um, any students watching this, which I, you know, majority students watching this, um, know that staff don't have it figured out either. Uh, we're all adjusting um, and I think it's yeah. disingenuous to think that we're not. 
Um, so I, I also really appreciated this article that was linked recently in the CU uh, LinkedIn network. Um, it was like a couple of weeks ago and it was about how we're not working from home, we're working during a pandemic. Um, and I really appreciated that reframe because uh, that's really important to hold on to. We're doing the best that we can with the tools that we have at this moment. Absolutely. Thank you, Em. And thank you so much again for joining us today. It's been a pleasure to speak with you about the Phoenix Center. Um, to repeat some of our highlights, if anyone has follow-up questions for Em, they can reach you at em period a -L -D -E -S at ucdenver.edu. Um, again, the Phoenix Center's free and confidential crisis hotline is open 24-7. That phone number is 303-556-2255. Um, we hope you'll check back with Student Life soon, check in with the Phoenix Center, see what our latest programming is, and I hope everyone stays safe. Thank you so much, and thank you, Em. Thank you.